Welcome to the Fundamentals of Surveying Q&A Review. Question number two. Let's begin with the call of the question. A client wants to create a two-acre parcel by establishing a north-south line, that's BC, as shown in the figure. The length of side AB is most nearly which of the following? A, B, C, or D? I cut to the four answer choices right after our question because basically these four answer choices are totally useless. You have to solve this problem on your own. And only when you solve the problem will you be able to select the answer choices. There's no rule of thumb or easy shortcut here. And in fact, I'm going to warn you right now that this is a tough problem. This problem requires us to find distance AB. But in order to do that, it's going to take some serious trig skills. And, you know, I'm going to be truthful and tell you it took me over 45 minutes to solve this problem because I had to take a step back, go back in my resources, and really understand some trig laws. And this requires, I wouldn't say advanced trig knowledge, but it requires a pretty firm understanding of trigonometry. So this question is not for the faint of heart. And if you ever get confused by the steps I'm discussing here today, rewind the video and watch it again. And also, have another web browser open and kind of Google some of the terms I'm going to use. And, you know, don't just watch how I do it. Really understand some of these trig laws and exactly how this is solved so you can use this in your tool belt later on in the real exam. To begin with, let's really understand the question. So we know that we have to solve for the length of AB, but what kind of inputs are given to us? So we have two triangles, and the area of both triangles is two acres, or about 87,000 square feet. Next, We've got the side of one triangle and the side of another. We have two sides in one area. That's what we've got to work with. So let's jump in and start with the basics. To begin with, we know that the area of a triangle equals one half base times height. Let's rewrite that. So instead of B times H, over two equals A, let us rewrite that triangle formula in terms of the given variables. The line A, little a, is going to be our height. And the line little b plus little c, because we have two triangles here, is going to be our base. If you need to, rewind and look at the big picture on the last slide. So little a is our height, and little b plus little c is our base. So base times height over two equals area, and two acres of land is equal to 87,120. Got it. Step two is to do a little algebra. So I'm gonna move over my one half that's the one over two on the left side, and I'm gonna move it to the right side. So what do I do? I multiply the left side by two, which now becomes B plus C times A, and then I multiply the right side times two. So 87,120 times two is 174, 240. So far, I haven't had to use any trig just some basic algebra and arithmetic. The next thing I'm going to do is find angles big A, big B, and big C. So big A, we know it's 45 degrees. They give us that. That's an azimuth. But 
What is angles B and C? You have to know the properties of a transversal line through two parallel lines. Properties of a transversal through two parallel lines. That is not quantum physics. That is just trick. And the rule here is that if there are two parallel lines, the line running north through A and the line running north through B, we are going to have the same angle between the outside of A and the inside of B. So if the outside of A is 45 degrees, then the inside of B is also 45 degrees. Awesome. So I now have the angle of A, the angle of B, and C is the same thing here, right? If the line through the transversal of the outside of the bottom triangle is 60, so is the inside of C. So angle B is 45, angle C is 60. Next, we're going to use our trig identities to solve for distance B and distance C. Little b, or the distance of B, is going to be the distance of A over tangent of angle B. And remember, we know angle B as 45. Then again, we'll use the same trig identity, SOHCAHTOA, to find the distance of C. Same thing here, right? So the distance of C is the distance of A over tangent of C. Little b, or the distance of B, is going to be the distance of A over tangent of angle B. And remember, we know angle B as 45. Then again, we'll use the same trig identity, SOHCAHTOA, to find the distance of C. Same thing here, right? So the distance of C is the distance of A over tangent of C. And again, we know the angle of C as 60 degrees. So we have the angle B and C, but we don't have the distance of A, and we also, if we don't have the distance of A, we can't find the distance of BC either. So we have two missing variables in each equation, missing A, missing B, and also missing A, missing C. What do we do? We're going to have to set this B and C equal to each other and solve for A. So let's do that. Our formula here is B plus C times A multiplied by 174, 240. So in order to solve for this, let us rewrite this equation. And we're going to rewrite the equation in terms of our two formulas from the last slide. So if B equals A over tan 45, let us replace B with A over tan 45. And if C equals A over tan 60, let us replace C with A over tan 60. So let's rewrite this in terms of A. So A over tan 60 multiplied by A equals 174, 240. And that's just plugging in the values of B and C. And now we have everything. We have every variable written in terms of A. And make sure before you crunch this number that you are going to have your calculator in degrees. Why waste valuable time memorizing equations and working out all of those long mathematical questions? Purchase a pre-programmed HP 35 from NLC that works the problems for you in seconds and frees up more time to work on the rest of your exam. Programs include Kogo, triangles, horizontal and vertical curves, and many more. The last thing I'm going to do is divide the left side of the equation by the right side. 
And the only thing I'm going to do here is to move over our big equation, the a over tan 45 plus a over tan 16 times a, and divide it by 174, 240. And the last question is, why is the square root symbol over this entire thing? Well, it's because we need to take the square root of both sides because we're going to have this a uh, on either side. And I want to take the square root because what we really have here is a squared. And we don't want to find a squared. We just want to find a. Look at that. Now that I have this equation as a equals square root of 174, 240 over this 1 over tangent, 1 over tangent, there is no more variables. All we have is actual numbers. So let's do this. Let's crunch that number with your calculator. And out comes 332.361. What is that? That is the height of the triangle. That's the distance from big A to the center of that north-south line. But don't stop there. Why? Because you have to take A and plug it in to those two equations from step two and step three. Let's do it. I'm going to plug in A over tan 45 equals the 332, 361. And then I'm going to take this 332, 361 over tan 60. Why is A and B the same? Because tan 45 is 1. So 332, 361 over 1 is the exact same number. Wow, what a journey. We have finally found A, B, and C the links of both line. But we're not done yet because I didn't ask you for the dimensions of the height and the two little triangles. I ask you for the length of AB. And in order to find that, I am going to use the trig identity of sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. So the sine of, what do we have? 45 and 60. So the sine of 45 equals opposite over hypotenuse. The sine of 45 equals opposite over hypotenuse. Again, let's go back to our big picture and you tell me, in the top triangle, which angle and which distance is opposite and what is hypotenuse. Well, opposite is going to be the line A. That's our height of the triangle, which is going to be the 332, 361. And then the hypotenuse is line AB. That's what we're trying to solve for, right? That's our ultimate question. What is the length of line AB? So we have to rewrite this. Sine 45 equals 332, 361 over AB. And if you want to rearrange that, you could say that line AB equals A over sine 45. And therefore, to put these in terms of real numbers, line AB equals 332, 361 over 0 0.707. So 332, 361 over 0 0.707. And that final answer is 470.073. And that is the length of line AB. Wow, what a problem. 
just taking the time to explain this problem after I already went through it was a nightmare. Step after step after step. So what am I going to recommend you do if you see a problem like this? If you're a math major, if you understand it, go for it. Take it on. But if you don't have a really, really good trig understanding, let me recommend one thing. Skip it. Skip that problem and use your time more efficiently. Every problem on the FS is worth exactly one point. And with my personal experience, I could probably do 10 surveying problems or legal problems in the same time it took me to do this one problem. And if you make a single fat finger mistake, you will get the wrong answer and you're going to get seriously flustered. So if you encounter a really nasty trig problem on the FS, skip it. If you've got more time at the end, come back and work it and, you know, do your best. But if you get a problem like this and you are even mildly confused, just move on, do another problem, and come back to it when you have more time. Because this is a detractor. It's meant to focus all of your energy and get you flustered so that you don't have the time to do the easy problems. For more strategy about how to take one of these questions on, check out my welcome section in the FS. But until then, if you've got a nasty problem like that, skip it and move on.